Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here talking about the power rule for integration. Let's remember the power rule for differentiation. When we take the derivative of x to some power, remember that the power comes out and multiplies in the front, and then we decrease the power by 1. We subtract 1 from the exponent. So our power rule for integration, if we were going to take the antiderivative of x to some power as the function, then that's simply going to be the opposite process in the opposite order. So here we multiplied in the front and then subtracted in the exponent. So going in the opposite order, we would affect the exponent first, and then what comes out second. So the opposite of subtracting 1 from the exponent is going to be adding 1 to the exponent. So our power will go up by 1. And then instead of multiplying out front, we're going to actually divide. So we will divide by our new power, n plus 1. So our antiderivative formula for x to the n dx is x to the n plus 1, divide by n plus 1, and we always want to remember to include our constant of integration. Let's take a look at some examples here. So we have the integral of x cubed dx. So the first thing I will do is add 1 to my power. We'll say x to the 4, and then I will divide by my new power. So we'll get over 4 plus c. We could go ahead and, if you prefer, you would like to say 1 fourth instead of over 4 x to the 4 plus c. Either of those are a good answer. Looking down here, the integral of x to the 5 dx. So our power goes up by 1. We get x to the 6 divided by the new power, which is 6, plus our constant of integration. Or if you prefer, you can certainly say 1 sixth x to the 6 plus c. Either of those are fine. Up here, the next one, the antiderivative of square root x dx. So remember, when we did derivatives of square root, we could also think of those as a power rule. Square root x, remember, is x to the 1 half power. So we're actually taking the antiderivative of x to the 1 half, and the power rule says we would add 1 to this. 1 half plus 1 is 1 and a half, also known as 3 halves. So we get the 3 halves power of x. Now we'll divide by that new power, right? So divide by 3 halves plus our constant of integration, and we don't want to leave this one with a fraction in a fraction. So we'll go ahead and instead of divide by 3 halves, let's bump that out and call it multiply by the reciprocal instead. So we'll say 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus our constant of integration there. And looking at this next one here, the antiderivative of the cube root of x dx. So just remember that this index of 3 for the cube root makes this the 1 third power. So we can treat the integral of cube root x as integral x to the 1 third dx. We will still do our power rule of raising the power by 1. 1 third plus 1 gives us 1 and 1 third, also known as 4 thirds. So we get the 4 thirds power of x. We'll then divide by our power of 4 thirds. So we'll get x to the 4 thirds divided by 4 thirds plus c. And cleaning that up so we don't have a fraction and a fraction, again, we'll go ahead and bump that up and multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll actually get an answer of 3 fourths x to the 4 thirds plus our constant. If the power had gone down by 1 to give us 3 here, then increasing the power of x by 1 would actually make 3x for us. Now we'll need 3x plus our constant, right, of integration to actually give us a derivative of 3 there. So in a way you can imagine a term like x to the 0 after this 3, and the power goes up by 1. Dividing by 1 won't change anything here. Now the integral of 0 is a bit different. These are both constants, but to get a derivative of 3 that is not 0, I need to have some term that is not just a constant, right? This 3x is what gives me the derivative of 3. But here when I say the antiderivative of 0 dx, that means we have some function that gives us a derivative of 0. And we know what gives us a derivative of 0, I think. Those are just constants. So this answer here is just going to be c. The derivative of a constant is 0, so the antiderivative of 0 is a constant. Looking over here, we have the integral of 1 over x squared dx. So we can think of this as a power rule as well. This is really like x to the negative 2 dx. So the power rule applies here. We can add 1 to the power, becomes x to the negative 1. Dividing by that new power gives us divide by negative 1 plus c. And then we should go ahead and clean this up and just say negative out front instead of divide by negative 1. And x to the minus 1 is really just the reciprocal of x. So that's x to the negative 1 written as a fraction. 
plus c. Oftentimes we don't want negative powers written in our answers, so this is usually going to be the preferred way to write x to the minus 1 over negative 1. Looking at this next one here, we have the integral of 1 over x to the 4 dx. So we just see this as a reciprocal again. This is really the antiderivative x to the negative 4 dx. So our power will go up by 1, so we'll have x to the negative 3. We'll divide by that new power of negative 3 plus our constant of integration. And now here, this negative 3 in the bottom is like negative 1 third, so we have negative 1 third, but where is our x to the negative 3, right? That's actually an x cubed in the denominator, right? So that actually says put the x cubed down there with the 3 plus our constant. Let's look at just two more here. So we have the integral of 1 over square root x dx. So a couple of things. We know that this is reciprocal, and it's also the 1 half power in the root. So this is really saying the antiderivative of x to the negative 1 half dx. So if we do the power rule here, we'll add 1 to negative half, which gives us positive 1 half. Dividing by that new power of positive 1 half, we'll want to change that, right? Plus c. So we've got divide by a half. Let's bump that out and multiply by the reciprocal instead. That would become times 2 on the outside. And our x to the 1 half, remember another way to write that would just be to say square root x. So we could say 2 root x plus c for this example. For this final one in our video here, we have the antiderivative of 1 over x dx. This one's a little bit strange. If I try to use the power rule with this, I would say, well, that's like x to the negative 1 power dx. But the problem with trying to use the power rule on this one is that we get what? We get x to the 0, which we might be able to figure out, but then divide by what? Well, divide by 0, and that's undefined, right? So that doesn't make any sense. So the way we actually see this is we have to think about do we know, outside of the power rule, some function that gives us a derivative of 1 over x? And the answer is it's actually the natural log function. So this one here looks like a power rule, but it's one that's not a power rule. So this antiderivative is actually ln of x plus c. And a small extra thing here, the domains of these functions are not actually the same, so we actually include an absolute value on our ln of x when you do the antiderivative. The reason that absolute value only happens one direction, all of the domain of natural log is in the domain of 1 over x, but not all of the domain of 1 over x is in the domain of natural log, so this absolute value only happens one direction. But this is not a power rule, which brings us to the next video in our series, which is about doing antiderivatives using reverse derivative rules. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you then.